And welcome to today's Way Forward Workshop Leaders Lunch Break, where we are pleased to welcome Kate Borders. Ms. Borders arrived at University Circle, Inc. from Tempe, Arizona earlier this summer following a highly successful nine-year career as a term, I should say, as president of Downtown Tempe Authority and Downtown Tempe Foundation. She previously held leadership roles at the Downtown Fresno Partnership, East Town Association in Milwaukee, and the Peoria Art Guild in Illinois. She was initially not interested in this position, but soon realized it married her love of art and art institutions, community education and outreach, and event planning. She also came to the realization of what we all know well, that this position was in a really cool place. She takes the helm as the 53-year-old institution and offers her excitement and expertise in urban and community development and place management. Appropriately, her first day was the community encompassing event, Parade the Circle. And several days later, the first Wade Oval Wednesday concert kicked off. Talk about baptism by fire in your first week on the job, it all came. Ms. Borders also serves as the board chair of the International Downtown Association, an organization that supports the creation of healthy city centers that anchor communities. Kate, welcome to our conversation, and most importantly, welcome to Cleveland. Thank you very much, Marianne, and to all of you for being taking your lunchtime to come and uh, participate. I think that's wonderful. I just want to say in your opening remarks, you said that I initially wasn't interested in the job. And just to clarify, um, I think the reason would have been that I was perfectly content, which is also a great place to be, right? In, in, um, in our professional careers, if we're really happy with where we are and we're feeling like we are making a difference, the desire to move somewhere else isn't something that is like a must, right? We're not escaping from anything. And so um, as I kept speaking with the recruiters, this was much more of a draw and a pull than an escape. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and yes, my first week was, it did include a Wow Wednesday, and tonight is the last night of Wow Wednesdays. So I encourage all of you, if you if you would like, and if you have the opportunity to come on down to Wow Wednesdays tonight. So that's the only shameless plug. Um, and I am glad to see a lot of faces of people that I know, and some of our team from UCI are here on this uh, program. So. Good to see all of you. Um, so they asked me to share just a little bit about kind of what I see since I've gotten here. And it's been just over two months at this point in time. And I would say that there isn't anything that has been kind of like incredibly like not what I expected at all, right? There has not been a moment that's, oh my gosh, I had no idea that this was going to happen. It's more been kind of fulfilling and a better understanding and giving me the opportunity to find depth in understanding this place. So my first two months going on three months, I've been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with the community. I've met with many of you and many of you are still on my schedule. Um, I can see some board members here. So it's been uh, kind of, I would say that with each conversation, it just kind of revealed another layer. So first of all, everyone seems to find that the assets within University Circle are really unmatched. And I knew that coming into it. I mean, uh, I actually saw Heidi on, on this on the screen and um, Heidi was the recruiter who brought me here. And when she first called me and she said, you know, you'll never find a place in, in the world with these institutions in this beautiful of a setting, in this incredible, you know, climate, um, with such warm people. So she was being honest, and I will say that I've found that to be true. I think that we have absolutely, and you all know this, so I'm preaching to the choir, an unmatched situation. But what I think happens in all places like this, and just this morning on a radio station, I mentioned that I used to live in Chicago and I never did the architectural tour. How many of us have lived in places that have like really amazing assets? I mean, I never went to the top of the Sears Tower, you know, I, I mean, and I lived there for a while. And I could say the same for other places that I've lived where I didn't take advantage of the great things that were within those places. How many of us 
fully recognize and appreciate and don't take for granted how incredible this place is. I think that that's something that I would challenge all of us to do on a more regular basis is go to all of these institutions, walk around, be a part of this community in ways that you take it as if you are an outsider, right? Take a moment to be a tourist in your own town because I think it's incredible what you have to offer and what we have to offer. And I'm so grateful to be a part of this. In coming into the team, I found that we have so much programming, the depth of what we do um, from, you know, education programs, programs like this that are really geared towards bringing the community into, into the circle. Uh, we do transit programs. We do, you know, ways that we are hopefully bettering the neighborhood and providing more safety for pedestrians and looking at advocacy for wayfinding and all of those types of things. There's so many layers to what we do that it's taking me a couple of months to even get kind of a handle on internally what we do. And so I would encourage you if you have any questions about anything that University Circle Incorporated is doing currently, please, please ask. Because um, I think that even within our organization, there are sometimes discoveries of, oh, wow, we've been doing that for a long time. The small program or a newsletter or something. You know, so I think and I, many of you represent that organizations that I would guess have similar experiences where maybe your full breadth of what you do isn't known to the outside community. So I think we all can learn from each other and, and continue to grow in that. So I guess I'm hearing that people love the, the assets, the team does a lot, and um, we are really challenged to do more for the community. Those are kind of the biggest things that I'm hearing is how can we be more responsive and answer the call of the community? And one question that the team has been asking me over and over again is how do we define community? And so how I define community, and this may not be how everyone defines it, I, you know, I think that this is absolutely a conversation piece that we should be having as a community. Uh, but how I define it is in university circle, we are, um, we are our institutions, obviously. I mean, they are right here within our, within our realm. We are the adjacent neighborhoods. And I think that we have to be much more responsive to these adjacent neighborhoods. And then beyond that, on any given day, we are visitors from around the globe. And, and I, back to my earlier point of us, potentially it is natural to take for granted the kind of great depth that we have here within this place. I think that is very evident when you recognize how much people respond globally. People are very aware of the incredible assets that we have here from other countries and all around the country, our country. So in, in recognizing that, I think that we are potentially some days, that is our community as well. So when I say community, I mean everyone that we are impacting. So these people that are within our midst on a daily basis, including our neighbors. And I think that so what I'm hearing again in all of my one-on-one -on -one meetings is we have this great place. We're not necessarily telling the story as well as we should, even internally. And then we have this community that we haven't potentially been serving to the best of our ability. So how do we do that moving forward? Now, that is not a question that I think anyone should take lightly or that we should immediately kind of jump to some kind of conclusion and say, oh, well, you know, nor am I that arrogant to think that I'm going to come up with something in two months of being here that all of you incredibly brilliant people haven't come up with. Um, I think our role is in convening all of you and bringing you together, making sure that your voices are heard, you being our community, and then building programmatically and from an impact and engagement perspective, kind of the next 50 to 100 years of how we can be the best neighbors. So I think it's going to take a little more time and a little more involvement. And I'm going to be calling on community members to say, hey, what do you need from us? What do you love that we do? What should you, we never quit doing? And what do you really hope we would start doing? Because we're this kind of web that is sitting below all of these incredible institutions and assets and beautiful neighborhoods and communities with incredibly rich, diverse cultures. How can we be the ones to bring it all together and celebrate everything that's here from the individual neighbor to incredible museums and institutions? 
how do we celebrate all of that and bring it together? And I think that's our role is to convene and tell the story to a global market. So that may sound really simplistic, um, but I think it's really exciting. And I think it's an incredible opportunity. And every day, every meeting, every layer that I peel back as people are sharing with me more and more, just kind of further to me demonstrates what that opportunity is and how big it is and how beautiful this whole experience can be. And we're all a part of it. So I guess it's kind of that, like going up to the balcony every day and saying, this is incredible. <laughs> and I see a question from Heidi. What has been your biggest surprise? What has been my biggest surprise? I, I, I guess my biggest surprise, probably in um, some of the perceptions. Um, kind of the depth of the perceptions and how they can be at times at odds with each other. Um, so for example, uh, let's take the concept of safety. Um, everyone has mentioned safety. Every single person that I have spoken to has mentioned safety, but the lens at which people come at safety could be completely different um, depending on how they have approached this place and what their histories and their backgrounds are. So one person say, may say, I really want to feel safe when I come there. Sometimes I don't feel safe. I want to make sure that I can do these things. Another person is saying, I've been told by my family generations that, that my family is not safe and welcome there. Um, and so how do I sort of start to think about safety? How do we all, because it's the responsibility of this larger community to think about safety from that perspective of every single person feeling safe? Um, I would say another is resources. You know, I'm, you know, I'm finding out that there are obviously perceptions from everyone around who has resources and who doesn't have resources and um, understanding while, you know, there's this perception that this area, I've heard all kinds of different kind of quick uh, comments or, or expressions about, you know, the history of University Circle and all of the wealth that could be here, um, but not everyone has that wealth, right? So these perceptions around resources and how do we best use them, I think understanding and identifying and having more clarity and transparency about resources is something that we could all do better. So I guess that's sort of my biggest surprise is that many of the issues that we're finding are approached from two totally different perspectives when you kind of look at how deeply they run in the community. But Heidi, thank you for that question. Um, <laughs> and I, yeah, I, I'm happy to take other questions. I think one thing I will just say as, you know, be before we get deeper into the Q&A is that I'm looking for your involvement as we move through this process. Um, as I mentioned, it's been a lot of one-on-ones to date and my team and I are coordinating group meetings moving forward as well as kind of what you would maybe call focus groups, but less formalized and more in kind of informative than laid back than that. But the goal is to get perspectives in the most efficient way from everyone, you know, that that cares about this place so that we can build the right work plan for the next, you know, one to three years with your input. So if you, you know, see an email from me or if anyone would like to help be part of that conduit to kind of connect us to people within the community, I would be really grateful because I really do want everyone's feedback. And we also are holding community meetings and we will be holding more of those. So if you see those, pop up in your inbox, please join us or share them with other people that have a passion or come to you and say, hey, I really think this should happen in University Circle. Well, absolutely, we want to know. So I guess with that, any questions or thoughts? Great, Kate, thank you. And we have had some questions come in. So Great. you you talked about the community meetings and wanting to understand the different perceptions. And there's been a lot of conversations around the relationship with University Circle and the surrounding neighborhood. So what are some of those initial perceptions you've heard from those who live in the adjacent neighborhoods? I mean, I don't think that there would be any surprise here. I think it would be that there is the, per whether it is, I'm not going to say right now, um, you know, every, 
if, if, if this is about an institution or an experience in an institution or an experience in the circle in general, um, but there appear to be these walls that people feel in the adjacent neighborhoods that there are days when they are welcome and that there are days when they potentially aren't welcome. And that's something that we have to change forever. You know, people should feel welcome every day, um, regardless of what activity may or may not be happening. They should feel welcome. This should be the living room for our greater community. And, and so I think that, I think we would all probably say that this is something that we've heard. So not a surprise, um, but still painful and something that we need to all kind of work towards repairing. And you mentioned your team who is helping you build these community meetings and do the outreach. Can you share more about the size of the team and the scope of the organization? Yes. I mean, I would say that roughly if we were fully staffed, we'd be at about 60 individuals. Half of that would be on our police side and half of that would be on our um, programmatic and operations side. So we have, and I mean, I will tell you coming from um, a business improvement district world, which is, I don't know if everyone's familiar with that, but um, we are this, I have my certification in place management. So the sort of the industry that I come from, which is taking like a, the idea of a district and managing a district um, and all of the assets that are within that district, whether it's an entertainment district or arts and culture, or if there's, uh, you know, businesses and nightlife, whatever the things are that are in residential, of course, all of those things. Um, and so our team is growing and managing many things that I think you would naturally find there. But for me, there are also things like we have a mechanic on site. Um, we have a mechanic because we have police vehicles. And so there's somebody that is operating, you know, and repairing those things. So there are components that, you know, while are very logical, you know, weren't things that I really thought about or knew I would be managing. So it's kind of fascinating the depth of the work that our, our team does. So yes, roughly 60, half on this kind of education, programming, um, commercial, you know, managing real estate, all of that kind of work. And then half you would see coming out of our operations center related to PD, whether that's on the leadership team, dispatchers, or actual police officers. And when you look at your programming, you know, we're often very familiar with Wait Over Wednesdays, Parade the Circle. What other programming does UCI offer in the neighborhood? So we just finished um, Yay Saturdays, which uh, was, this was the third year of Yay Saturdays. And this is a program that basically invites collaboration with all of the institutions to be free and open to the public on a Saturday in the park in Wade Oval, um, where people can come up to different tents and have different experiences with different community partners and get educational opportunities and then also have fun. So there were theme weeks where, you know, it was circus or, there were opportunities for even things like bounce houses and playing in foam and things like that. So it was fun and educational in collaboration with our neighboring institutions. And that, as I mentioned, has been going on for three years. And that's the kind of thing that we also wanna be growing is how can we do things that not everything needs to be at the level of wow, but it needs to be touching different members of the community. And my hope is that our programmatic calendar over the course of the year will have something for everyone. Sorry about the dog barking. <laughs> Um, I did do this from home because our internet is a little less stable in the office, so I wanted to be more stable, knowing there'd be the risk of a dog barking. Um, but other programs, of course, everyone knows the ice rink, and, um, and I think everyone is probably familiar with a lot of the education work that we do, so that falls under programming, going into schools, creating, you know, offering curriculum, and then having a field trip program. We also have a middle school program and um, do other field trips also in East Cleveland. So a lot of educational work, this community programming is sort of the, the starting point, And I think it's where we can grow. We need to be doing more of all of that. I'd love to see something at the level of wow and yay happening 365 days a year, unless of course the weather is terrible. <laughs> just always a possibility in Cleveland. Always a possibility, but I've learned that if you don't like it, just wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So as you are looking at these possibilities and thinking ahead, where do you see UCI having the most momentum at this point, and where do you envision focusing some attention? 
I think we have momentum in things like wow. I mean, I think it is simplified to say that, right? But when when you have, there's always a tipping point for something like a new event. And when you are able to open open up a space, a place to the community and invite them in, and there's little, you know, other than parking, there's little kind of barriers for them um, to participate. And you get the memento that we have, people, you know, upwards of thousands of people. I've heard that there are some nights when we hit 10,000 people, you know, for maybe potentially a, a band like tonight. Um, that is something to build on. We have a connection point with the community that we can take and expand upon in a way that we wouldn't have had 17 years ago without that event, right? We wouldn't have even had an access point potentially into the community that we do now. And so I think that's probably our greatest momentum. And I do think all of our work in education has connected us to the schools, the teachers, the principals, and you know, no matter how we evolve within those programmatic areas, both of those, our community events and our education events, we have connections that we can call on to say, what are we doing that's successful? How have we been impactful to you? And what can we do moving forward? And I mean, building those relationships is the first key. In thinking about building relationships and with your background in placemaking and how do you see being able to work with downtown Cleveland to be able to knit together kind of that downtown corridor over to University Circle? Well, I do really, really believe in partnerships and collaborations. Um, I have always worked with, you know, whoever the Visitors Bureau is and, you know, looking forward to engaging with Destination Cleveland, um, whoever the version of the chamber is, you know, and also um, Michael Deemer and his team at DCA. I've known Michael for years in this place-based world. We are, I would even say, close friends. And um, we've spent time together at different conferences and we've been talking about Cleveland for a long time. So I think it's a natural fit for us to think through ways that we could partner. We've already gotten together and met about what are the safety concerns that we're both having, you know, as far as um, issues that downtown is seeing, are they the same, are they not the same? So the door is wide open for us to work together moving forward. And I would even take it a step further. And in Arizona, we established a statewide network of different downtowns and urban centers and everyone that was kind of working towards improving their urban places and um, and or kind of commercial centers, right? And I think that that's something that I'd love to meet with people in other parts of the state who are doing great work and figure out what are the challenges that we're sharing regionally. Because ultimately, you know, people talk about this place from a global perspective, and that will mean all of these places. What's going on in Columbus? You know, we're so close to Akron. How do we support each other? And thinking through potential needs and opportunities, the adjacent neighborhoods, University Circle itself, doesn't have a lot of grocery stores or food access. How does UCI take a look at how we might be able to solve the food desert issues in that area? Yeah, I think these are places where, I mean, obviously we can't be everything to everyone, but we can advocate strongly and we can use our voices and our relationships to really hopefully move the needle on some of these bigger issues. And that's not going to be the only one. I mean, the food desert issue, you know, I've even, I've had people say to me, if you are, you people want their neighborhoods to feel normalized, right? And to feel like they have access to all of the opportunities that any neighborhood has. So whether it's grocery or where do you go to see a movie or where do you get like a small little community arts center? You know, where do you see a play that is represented with people that are in your neighborhood and your community? So how, you know, how do we help incentivize and have conversations around those things? I think that that's something that, you know, maybe our biggest role again is that convener, allowing people to tell their stories and ask for what they need and then hopefully Again, coming back to the brain power of everyone that's here and saying, how do we connect these, these things and make them happen? And it, yes, yes, we have a new grocery store that's being built right now that's in closer proximity than we've ever had. So that's great. You know, whether that will meet the need or not, good questions to keep asking. But I think that as well as everything else, every access point that our neighbors deserve, we should be trying to figure out how to, to provide. 
share any thoughts around making University Circle more of a weekend late night district other than Little Italy? Not a lot that's open after nine o'clock. You know, it's fun. careful what you wish for. It's funny how um, coming from ASU's back door, um, Arizona State University is the largest undergraduate population in the country with 55,000 undergraduate students. You know, many of us came, came from towns that were smaller than that. I did. So um, 55,000 undergraduate students can really um, wreak havoc. <laughs> And so, you know, I came from an entertainment district and there were times when I was, you know, would, would have wished that I wasn't in an entertainment district, but, but then you come here and you're, and you wonder, wow, why are people not, you know, how can I increase this level of kind of like partying and happy hours and excitement and energy? Because it is, it is a component of life. Nightlife is a component of life. And um, I, I can't, honestly can't say I have figured that out yet. I think it's critical I think, you know, when we have a when we have a place that skews more nightlife, then we're really thinking about how do we attract daytime attention. And here it's the opposite. And we're we're thinking about, you know, we have these day uses and we're in that influx of daytime, you know, users, but then how do we maintain people and get them to stay? And usually it's step by step. It's residential because they'll be walk, you know, walking distance. So they'll they'll be in really close proximity. And then it's creating whatever those nightlife opportunities are that really kind of speak to the people that can walk and get there. And then also providing more opportunities for once there is a base, I mean, the market demands, you know, various things. And so at the point when we have enough demand for more entertainment, more restaurants, more happy hour locations, more wine bars, I mean, kind of that, that level of, of entertainment, I think we will just keep pushing that. I know that there have been things that have tried and failed and it was probably just, you know, density. And so we have to build the density, we have to encourage the density, and then we have to build products and encourage and advocate for products that kind of work with that, with those customers. So as you look ahead for the work that's coming for you, what are some of the challenges that you are anticipating and how are you looking to overcome those? Well, okay. So, I mean, I think everyone's greatest challenges are our two most limited resources, time and money. And um, even right now, I feel this time pressure. I want to get these things done. I want to answer the question of what is our big vision and how are we going to accomplish it? And what is it going to look like in a year? I want to do that today. I actually wanted to do it yesterday. So um, there is definitely a desire to move faster, uh, but also not in a disrespectful way. You know, I definitely want to make sure that people are heard before I'm making decisions that impact them. Um, meaning I and my organization. Um, and I think also another great challenge is when you are moving quickly or you are trying to do great work, you know, you're going to mess up. We're going to try things that are going to fail. We're going to say things that are going to fail. We're going to do things. We're going to have approaches. We're going to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. And that's just natural. And, uh, you know, all we can do is hope that enough meetings like this with the community and will people will know that UCI as an organization has a heart that's in the right place. It's moving in the right direction and our mishaps, hopefully, you know, will become part of the story that we apologize for. I think we all, every single day as humans, as institutions, in every single faction of our lives, we have, you know, we need to improve and we can only do better tomorrow what we, what we know how to do better. So I guess I think of that every day. How can we do better today than we did yesterday? Thanks so much, Kate. This has been fabulous to, to meet with you, to better understand what you want, and certainly we'll chime in and help you to guide you on your listening tour.